What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Market Unlimited. My name's Matt, and today we're going to be talking about interest rates, more specifically, long term interest rates. This is important because interest rates affect everything from mortgages to the stock market to the real world economy. So, before we get started, make sure you click like and subscribe, and let's check it out. For our analysis, we're going to use a Treasury Bond ETF. This particular Treasury Bond ETF with the symbol TLT tracks the 20-year Treasury bill. It can be bought on the stock exchange, so some investors like to use this rather than go through Treasury Direct and buy it outright. One thing I did want to mention before we get started is that bonds and interest rates are inversely related meaning that if interest rates go up, the price of this bond is going to go down and vice versa. So with that being said, let's take a look at what's happening right now. Preparing for the previous video on realty income, which you guys can check out on my page, I took a look at TLT because REITs are interest rate sensitive and I wanted to get a feel for what might be happening with rates in the future. I picked up on a pattern that was beginning the form called a descending triangle. Now, for those unfamiliar with a descending triangle, the way this works is you'll have a flat bottom here, meaning that when the price goes down, there's strong support at one set price. And as the stock advances, each rally peaks at a slightly lower level than the previous. So you have a negative trend line at the top to go with the flat bottom at the bottom. Now, as you can see, as we go through this channel, things get tighter and tighter until we get to the apex. When we get to the apex, a large move is gonna be made in either direction. With this particular pattern, it's bearish. So more times than not, it'll break to the downside. As you remember, bonds are inversely related to interest rates, meaning that if TLT breaks towards the bottom, then that means that interest rates on the 20 year are soaring. So just wanted to go over that, but let's take a little bit of a closer look at the current chart right now. So if we do see the big drop in TLT, it's hard to say exactly how much of a drop it'll be. Now, I'm going to go back to November of last year, since there's a little bit of support in the ETF around this $88 level, 87 and some change. So we'll just pick a day. Um, we'll say like the 13th or 14th of November 2023. If it drops, this might give us an idea of where it may bottom at. It could go further down. It may not be as much. We're just using this as a guideline. So let's take a look at mortgage rates to start. As of today, the average 30 year is 6.91. Let's see where that was back in November, around the 13th or 14th. So it was about 7.4%. About a half a percent of a difference. So if we do see the big move to the downside in TLT, um, just going off of some historic data, maybe we see interest rates go up a half a percentage point. I think that could be realistic. Let's take a look a little bit further into this, how it may affect the stock market. The stock market is divided into 12 individual sectors with 10 major sectors. I found some research on Seeking Alpha that shows historically how each sector responds to rising interest rates. So I find this to be very helpful because it gives us a feel for what we can anticipate as far as performance goes if we do see the large rise in yields. So as we can see here, historically financials and energy perform very well. And this also is in line with some of the previous research that we went over in my prior video about energy. If you've had a chance to watch the video, or if you want to see the video, which is on my page, you'll remember that we mentioned that energy is looking pretty strong at the time, and it's continued to remain strong since the video has been posted. 
In the most recent video, we covered Realty Income, which is a REIT. And I mentioned that I thought there was some bearishness to that, which would also be supported um, by weakness of REITs in a rising rate environment. So looking at the chart, we can see energy would perform well. Industrials would also do well. As we get to the middle, healthcare is about neutral. And then when we move to the right, as far as what would underperform or uh, potentially sell off, we have utilities and we have technology. Utilities are bond-like in nature. Typically, they're not very volatile and investors buy them for yield. But when you have yield coming from risk-free assets like treasury notes and T-bills, the uh, utility sector becomes less appealing and people just prefer to move to um, to buy bonds at that time just to safeguard themselves against risk. And then technology is the most volatile. If we go back a couple of years to 2022, when the rate height cycle originally started to take place, technology actually led the market down and a lot of big names we're down 75, 80% in some cases. So I wanted to share this with you guys. Let me know what you think. And there's one thing I want to wrap up with. A lot of people are aware that the Federal Reserve sets interest rates. And while that's true, the Fed has more control over short-term rates than long-term rates. Long-term rates are more or less set by investors. The reason I'm bringing this up is because occasionally you'll have a situation where short-term rates actually pay more than long-term rates. When this happens, it's referred to as a yield curve inversion. And the reason this is important is because when the yield curve inverts, that's usually predicting a recession is on the horizon. It's actually predicted every recession since World War II. So the reason that I want to bring this up today is because we can see that the Fed fund rate is currently around 5.25 to 5.5 percent. And if we look at some of these longer duration treasury notes, they're currently paying more in the mid fours. So there's about a 1 percent difference between the short term and the long term yield. Now, if the long term yield begins to rise to meet the short term yield and it uninverts, that would be a situation where there may be trouble on the horizon as far as the economy goes. So we have yet to see this happen. The yield curve has been inverted for about two years now, but this could be the type of catalyst where it finally closes. So I just wanted to bring that to everybody's intention in case that does happen. So wrapping everything up, TLT is currently in a descending triangle, which is nearing its apex. I would imagine that there's going to be a large move soon, with the more likely scenario being to the downside. Once again, since bonds and yields are inversely related, this would mean that yields are rising. It'll have a different effect on each sector of the stock market, as outlined in the chart earlier. And we should also see higher mortgage rates. If yields rise enough, we may even see the yield curve uninvert, which may have negative real world implications to it. But what do you guys think about this? In any event, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you like it. And if you want to see future content like this, subscribe to the channel. Until next time.